All right, so we're getting into balanced menus. We're in chapter 10. So chapter eight was talking about healthy cooking methods and um, we're gonna, it was getting us prepped for balanced menus. So balanced menus, you've already started to do um, this in your MyFitnessPal account and in answering the questions for each homework assignment, you're starting to think about, okay, what are healthier alternatives? What, what different food swaps can I make? Um, you know, am I in the calorie range? Am I in the right range for carbohydrates, fat, and protein? How can I increase um, my protein intake or my amino acids? How can I increase my vitamins and mineral intake? So you're already thinking about those things. So really you're just combining that to creating menus and, um, and this is going to be helpful as you're working on your group project. So I also have on here a YouTube video, which I hope you will check out. And I wish I could show it on here, but unfortunately I can't. <laughs> so anyway, um, check it out. I think it's great for some comical relief. All right, so... Learning objectives, explain how to develop and evaluate balanced menu items for a particular restaurant. Um, so this is really not necessarily for a particular restaurant. This is really just so I'm helping you get ready for the group project. You're already working on it, but this is really what it's gonna be entailing. Plan tasty balanced menu items. Um, and then uh, also some presentation tips. So creating balance and menu option takes an understanding of food groups portion control, calories, types of fat, simple and complex carbohydrates and sugar and sodium levels. So this is very basic. Um, and so, as I said, you've already been thinking about these concepts in chapters one through five leading up to, um, actually chapters one through seven really leading up to um, this PowerPoint. So keep on thinking about those concepts and bring them into your menu development. So there are three most important components to any dish, presentation, taste, and value. So presentation, there's lots of different tips on making your plate very presentable. Um, the best thing that I can say, you can take a look at these different, um, these different suggestions on the slide, but the best thing when it comes to presentation is what makes the food appetizing, what makes you like at one one look at it, you already just want to eat it. So for me, I think that that's presentation. Sometimes presentation is the artistic approach. Um, sometimes it's about color or the shape or like the height or the different dy um, dynamics or dimensions of the plate. So it's really up to you how you want to present. Now, if you have Netflix, I uh, really like the show Chef's Table and there's so many different ways of plating a dish um, that there's so much to draw from when it comes to presentation. Here's one way to look at a balanced menu um, so, or a meal. So I highly recommend paying really close attention to this slide as you're working on your group project because these are really great tips and information. Um, so this is per meal. Uh, about eight, this, These are all estimates, but this is if you are incorporating these estimates into your group project, you're, the way that you're thinking about making your dish healthy is going to fit in with your group project and it's going to, and it's just, you're going to do great. So 800 calories or less, 20 to 35 percent of calories coming from protein, or sorry, fat. Excuse me, an emphasis on oils that are high in mono and polyunsaturated fat. 10 grams or less from saturated fat, no trans fat. 10 grams or more of fiber, uh, four teaspoons or less from added sugar. About 30 grams of protein, 800 milligrams or less of sodium, about one third teaspoon of salt. So here are some suggestions, maybe not so much directions for menu planning. Um, use existing items on your menu. Modify existing items to make them more nutritious. Adjust an existing menu selection and create new selections. One suggestion um, may also be to go, you might have to start from scratch, but if you can keep the key components or the essence of the dish, then that works too. So I say that as a tip also as you're working on your group project. So you wanna consider these different things when you're um, creating your balanced menu. Uh, there's a lot. So it really has to, so for our, for our class, um, for the group project, it's just going to be nutrition focused. But if you were tasked with this assignment 
in a kitchen or in a restaurant that you are helping um, make the menu items more balanced, these are some great things to be thinking about as you go as you go into that. So for appetizers, soups, and salads, you want um, low to moderate use of bacon, cream, cheeses, salt, butter, cured meats, and sugar. And why might why why do you think that might be? Because a lot of these ingredients are high in fat, sugar, and salt. I mean, sugar and salt show up on there. We could have just put fat there, huh? <laughs> but wanted to give you some practical applications. So <clears throat> with the appetizers, um, garnishes are important. Um, you can utilize creative sauces we had talked about in the last lectures, uh, mo mojos, um, salsas, dressings, um, compotes. So there's different ways of creating a nice sauce for your appetizer um yeah there's a lot that you can be thinking about so much goes into menu planning this is really interesting i'd only use dehydrated vegetables once but i don't have a dehydrator so i haven't done it since but when i was working in a restaurant we did that so it's kind of a fun di dimension um the thing we were looking for in that dish was to give it some crunch here's different wrappers that you can utilize for different appetizers and then here are some different appetizer ideas. Really, you can, you can, sky's the limit when it comes to your menu development, especially for this group project. You can, you can utilize any suggestions that are here in the slider in your textbook, or you can really have fun with it. You want to start from, like I said, key, keeping the key components or the essence of the dish. But if you're struggling to make it more nutritious, we can always chat about different ways of going about that. Um, soups. Okay, so as you know, soups, um, you're going to want to think about what you're adding to those soups. You're going to want to think about the consistency, what type of soup, how can you reduce um, salt and or fat um, in the soup itself. You can utilize bases. However, you might want to think about how high it is in salt and you might have to um, really, really dilute it because a lot of bases, um, it's like a concentrated version of stock, but bases uh, are typically high in salt, so you're gonna wanna think about that or make it from scratch. Again, salads and, dr and dressings, I recommend experimenting and utilizing those different infused oils and vinegars that we were talking about. Um, with, uh, with any salad or dressing that's just conventional from the store, again, they're gonna be high in uh, sugar, salt, or fat. So I would recommend making them from scratch. I'm not gonna go through um, salads too much, but you can you can definitely get creative. Um, so for example, in your salad, you could include legumes, beans, um, grains, vegetables. Um, you could incorporate lots of different things into your salad, but it's completely up to you if you want to do a salad. <laughs> um, there's also fruit salads. Um, again, here, like, here's like a really great basic uh, vinaigrette. Um, if you're creating it, then utilizing good quality vinegars, um, uh, pressed oils, um, fresh herbs. You can also incorporate some of these, the Dijon mustard and shallots. That's a good one. Um, but any of these are up for grabs. So like I said, here's just some more examples and suggestions oh here we include a basic herb vinaigrette which is one part oil one part vinegar and about two parts stock if you want you don't have to do that you can also do two or three parts oil one part two part vinegar really it's up to you the flavor that you're going for and the texture that you're going for so these are just options your options also if you want to use a creamy dressing Honestly, for the assignment, I would stick away from sauces and dressings just because those are additional calories that you'll have to input into My Fitness Pal. So it might be easier for you to do without. Unless your menu, your menu item absolutely calls for it, then yeah, you would have to go through the trouble of doing that. But I wouldn't say add on if because that might be more work for you in the end. There's more discussion about dressings. Okay, so like we talked about in the protein section, you want to um, select lean cuts of meat. So here's examples of lean cut. And then how much would you want? Um, four to five ounces is, a good, is an adequate portion, particularly for an entree. 
if you are going to do a smaller entree portion, like if you are going to do a smaller cut of meat, like let's say three ounces, you're going to want to accompany with grains, beans, um, potatoes, colorful seasonal vegetables, um, just so it adds, it adds bulk to that plate. And definitely be thinking about ways you can develop the flavor without adding salt. So anything that we discussed in chapter eight can be utilized for that. Just more suggestions. Okay, balanced sauces, pureeing vegetables we talked about in chapter 8. Coulis is a thick puree or sauce made from vegetables or fruits, so that might be a way of going about um, adding some flavor. Just talking about salsas, relishes, and chutney. Um, I have not made chutney, but I've always wanted to, so these are examples of balanced sauces that you can incorporate. Here's the difference between a compote. And then um, the moho, if anybody hasn't heard of it, um, I, I know I hadn't until this class. It's a, it's a spicy sauce, and it's um, more popular in the Caribbean and South America. Um, so I've always wanted to try it. I have not run into it yet. If you have any restaurant suggestions, uh, please send them my way. I think a compote would be great if you want to utilize that for your dessert. Glaze, reduced juices, a lot of this is um, review from Chapter 8. So that's great news for you guys. Less to study. Sautéing vegetables, tips for side dishes, here's talking about presentation, and we talked about these um, in, the last, in the last slide about um, the ratio of your ingredients for desserts. So here's different dessert ideas, we can talk about those more in depth. But I do like um, the different suggestions that are here, and these might be good ideas for you to utilize in your group projects. That's kind of fun. Different. Never tried that before. These are just some breakfast tips. Um, totally up to you. So I'm guessing this section would have been more practical for anyone who's interested in catering. Um, so these are just different tips of what can be out on a spread. Catering or anyone who's thinking about working in um, hotels. So all food for thought, pun intended. In this, um, in this I'm sorry, we normally have more discussion in, for this. Um, and then I keep it really brief so that way I give you time to work on your prison or on your group project. So I'm sorry that this is very minimal, but this is also good because it's like I said, it's less for you all to study. So everything that was on those last um, four slides here is a nice picture that summarizes all of it. And another one. 